there's a staining garment, not a blemish. In truth, I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son I have landed by himself. And of the king's ship, how hast thou disposed? Safely in the harbor. Any of thy charge exactly as before. But there is more work. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pain, let me remember thee what thou hast promised. How now, Moody? What canst thou demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service. Till be no lies, may be no mistaking. Thou did promise to bait me a full year. Don't forget what torment I did feed thee. No. Thou dost. I do not. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy has grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Tell me. Speak. Sir, in Argier. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, what thou forgettest. This damned witch Sycorax, this blue-eyed hag, was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant. Imprisoned did thou most painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died, and left thee there, without its bent thy groans. Then was this island, save for the child that she did litter here, not honored with a human shape. Yes, Caliban her son. Don't think. I say so. He that Caliban, who now I keep in my service, thou knowest best what torment I did find thee. Thy groans did make wolves howl. It was mine art when I arrived that oped the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, Master. <clears throat> thou more murmurous, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, Master. I will be corresponding to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Go. Make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no eyesight but mine and thine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go. Take the ship and hither come in it. Go hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story puts heaviness on me. Shake it off. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never gives us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir, who I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss it. He does make our fires, fetching our wood and serves an office that profit us. What ho, slave, Caliban! Come forth, thou earth, speak! There's wood enough within. Come forth, I say, there's other business for thee, thou tortoise. When? Fine apparition, my dear Ariel. Hawk in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself, Upon thy wicked dam, come forth! There's <laughs> a wicked do, as here my mother brushed, with raven's feather from unwholesome fen drop on you both. A southwest blow on ye, and blister your law. For this be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramps. Thou shalt have side stitches that shall pen thy breath up. Thy shall be pinched as honeycombs, each pinch more stinging than the bees that made them. This island's mine, by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me and made much of me, would give me water with berries in it and teach me how to name the greater light and how the less that shine by day and by night. And then I loved thee, and showed thee all the qualities of the island. The fresh springs, the brine pits, the barren places, and fertile curse be I that did so. All oh, the charms of Sycorax, 
Toads, beetles, bats light on you. For I am all the subjects that you have. That was worth mine own king. And here, here you stye me in this hard rock and do keep me from the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell until thou decide to seek to violate the honor of my child. No, no, would it have been done? I have peopled else this isle with Caliban. A horrid slave, I pity thee. I took pains to make thee speak. I taught thee each hour, one thing or another. When thou didst not savage, but would gabble like a thing most brutish, I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. You taught me language, and my profit on it is that I know how to curse. The Red Plague rid you for learning your language. Hard see hence! Fetch us in fuel and be quick. If thou dost neglect or dost unwillingly, ah, what I command, I will wrap thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee raw, that beasts shall tremble at thy dig. Uh, no, pray I, I must obey. His art is of such power, so slave hence. sure it waits upon some god of the island. Sitting on a bank, weeping again, the king my father's wreck, it hath crept upon me by the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me, rather. But tis gone. No, it begins again. The ditty does seem to remember my child's father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth... <coughs> I hear it now above me. The famous curtains of thine eyes vanish, and see what thou seest, John. What is it? A spirit? Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form, but it's a spirit. No, daughter, it eats and sleeps and has such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck. With grief, that's pity, that's beauty's canker, thou might call him a goodly person. He has lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I might call him the same divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Minute by spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure, the goddess on whom these heirs attend. Vouchsafe my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island, and will some good instruction give how I may bear thee here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, Oh, you wonder, if you be made or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language? Heavens, I'm the best of they that speak this speech, were I but where it is spoken. How? The best? And what would the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing, as I am now, that wonders to hear thee speak of me. Myself, and Naples, which with mine eyes beheld the king my father wrecked. Alas for pity, father. Aye, faith, and all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. The Duke of Milan and his more brave daughter could control thee if we were now fit to do it. At first sight they have exchanged eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. A word, good sir, a word. I fear thou hast done thyself a disservice. A word. Why speak my father so urgently? This is the third man I ever saw. <laughs> the first I ever sighed for. Pity, please move my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir, one word more. They are both in each other's flowers. But this swift business I must not make easy, lest the light winning make the prize light. One word more. I charge thee that thou attend me. That thou dost hear you serve the name that thou knowest not, and hast put thyself upon this island to steal it from me, the Lord on it. No, as I am a man. If the ill spirit hath so fair a temple, good things will strive to dwell within it, Father. Follow me. Speak not to him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shall thou drink. Thy food shall be fresh brook mussels, withered roots and hasps, wherein the acorn cradled. Follow! No. 
I'll resist such entertainment until my enemy has more power. Father, make not too rash a trial for him. He's gentle and not fearful. What? I say, my foot, my tutor, put thy sword up to